Good morning all. Everybody's ready back there. Thank you. As Parliament starts this week, inevitably we will be continuing to debate climate change and pricing carbon. That debate will not only happen in Parliament House, it will happen around the nation. Debate is a good thing, but debate needs to be informed by the facts. For our nation to continue to be a nation up to the big reforms, we have to have a public debate informed by the facts. That's why at the start of this sitting week I wanted to draw uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> Some noise in the back there. Uh, that's why at the start of this sitting week I wanted to draw people's attention to some recently made available information about the science of climate change. Addressing climate change all starts with the science. The science is telling us that climate change is real. The government accepts the science. We accept the science from our own CSIRO. We accept the science from our own Weather Bureau. And I would draw people's attention to information released two weeks ago by the CSIRO and by our Weather Bureau, which is available to members of the public in an easily understood form. That data shows that carbon dioxide is now at its highest level in more than a million years. It's an unambiguous fact. Carbon dioxide at its highest level in more than a million years. And to tackle climate change, we have to cut carbon pollution. We have to cut those carbon dioxide levels with that carbon dioxide generated overwhelmingly by human activity. Uh, what this science is telling us is if we look to the days before the Industrial Revolution, before the Industrial Era, if we look, say, to the year 1800, it, at that time carbon dioxide was 280 parts per million. Now, in late 2010, post the Industrial Age and in the world we live in today, carbon dioxide is 387 parts per million. That's an increase of almost 40%, which the CSIRO says is largely due to human activity. Now, the measurement of this carbon dioxide isn't the province of scientists in lab coats. People can access this information themselves through the CSIRO website. There they will find a graph that updates air samples recorded from Cape Grim in Tasmania. They've been recorded since 1976. Cape Grim is one of the three premier air pollution monitoring stations in the world and that graph shows rising carbon dioxide levels. Now, what does all of this mean? Well, it means that our climate is changing. The advice indicates that if we do not cut carbon pollution, average temperatures around Australia could increase by between 2.2 to over 5 degrees Celsius by 2070. Now, this is a huge change. It's equivalent to the climate of Cairns being the climate in New South Wales. It's equivalent to the climate of Melbourne being the climate of southern Tasmania. It means the number of extreme heat days in Australia will increase uh, with all of the stress that that puts on the young and the elderly. It means that global warming would see sea levels rise by possibly up to a metre by the end of this century. That's a huge risk for many parts of our country. And it would also see the Great Barrier Reef threatened by increasing ocean temper temperatures and acidification. And of course that's a threat to a natural wonder in the world, but it's also a threat to the tourism industry in Queensland and the 54,000 jobs that it supports. There's also a risk to infrastructure from higher temperatures, altered groundwater and soil conditions, including the potential failure of urban drainage and sewerage systems, more blackouts, transport disruption and greater building damage. Having accepted the word of our scientists, their research, that our climate is changing and it is caused by carbon pollution generated by human beings, I am determined to act. I am determined as the Australian economy is strong that this is the right time to act. 
I also understand as our economy continues to be the envy of the world, there are many Australian households who aren't feeling the benefit of that strong economy in their ordinary lives. Which is why, of course, as we move to price carbon, we will also move to assist Australian households and nine out of ten households will get the benefits of tax cuts or payment increases or a combination of both. During the course of this week, I anticipate we will see many claims and counterclaims made about climate change and pricing carbon. As we move through the week, my message is we need a debate that is governed by reason and governed by facts. The facts are clear, the science is in, we must move to address carbon pollution by putting a price on carbon.